In this video, we're going to talk all about gaskets. I know that sounds like a fascinating topic. It's <laughs> not, but you, if you need to know about a gasket, you're happy to know what you need to know. So here are two kinds of gaskets. This one's NVR rubber, the black one, and then this is silicone. Cone. So we have uh, what's currently in the uh, decent right now is our MBR rubber and this is slightly different in the new version that we're doing which is silicon uh, and they fundamentally have different properties so the MBR if you do have a new one or two take yours out you'll notice it's a little bit squidgy uh, but the silicone one is much more sort of malleable and, and, and flexible underneath your grip but what a, people don't, a lot of people don't know is that the gasket is probably one of the most common pieces on the espresso machine to change and to fail and yes. to cause problems that's right and um, the lifespan essentially is how long you use it for and how much you abuse the machine yes as well that's very uh, you true. may have noticed i'm going to use the porter filter here paul when he locks in his porter filter often will do this mm. with his hands and what he's doing is he's purposely using muscles that are weak yeah. so that he just tightens it enough what he's not doing is this muscle thing. <laughs> it's another reason on the DE, one that we have this handle here is so that you squeeze with your arms like this. You don't grab it and lean like that, right? Which, and the reason for that is that this rubber, if you highly compress it, will age more. Next on that, which is if when you're finished making your espresso, you then lock this in super tight, you now compress it and that is gonna age it as well. So it's rather important that when you leave your espresso machine at the end of the day, and this is all valid to every espresso machine, not just the decent, that you leave it just loosely locked on, just enough to bite the rubber, but not anymore. I have seen gaskets last two weeks when people just go, mm. you know, and the next poor person who has to undo it <laughs> has a hard time. The other thing that can happen is if you tighten it while it's hot, the rubber's soft, and as it cools, the rubber hardens, which makes it even harder to get the port filter off. This machine had a lot of innovation, and I found that people were already freaking out about all this new stuff here. And so what I did is I found a espresso parts company in Italy that made gaskets or sold them for everybody. And every Italian machine I could find used NBR rubber. Not a single one was using silicone. This is seven years ago, okay? So I thought, all right, let's just Tone down the weirdness just for a, a minute here. We're gonna go with this. And the reason is, is that if you're used to this, there's this very rapid bite. Just as you push, it goes lock, you're done. With silicone, it's much, much softer. And it starts to bite and you keep moving, keep moving. And initially, you might think it's kind of cheap, right? Why do I have to push so much? It's kind of squishy. This isn't a nice feel. A little bit like car doors and how they close. Oh, People yeah. get very particular mm. about it. So I am going to say that um, it's a matter of taste. You might prefer NBR. You might prefer silicone. The expert crowd is really moving towards silicone, whereas virtually every professional machine is still on NBR. If you're not used to the, the, the properties of the, the gasket, you know, if you're used to using silicon, let's say, for example, and then go back to MBR, mm -hmm. um, you'll find that extra motion where you're, you, you feel a bit of resistance on a silicon, um, but then you might just give it an extra bit of push. Um, and, and that's just from experience, maybe they've done it once and they've seen a leak. So as the extractor is going, they push it through again, they see it forms a seal. That's right. As yeah. that rubber tires, if it starts to leak, and you'll see it as clear drops of water around. If you see that, that means your gasket isn't fitting right, okay? And there's kind of, I think, two main reasons for that. One, the gasket can just be getting tired, but if the gasket's pretty new, that probably isn't it. The more common thing I see is, you'll see Paul, every time that he takes a porter filter, he always does this. He always wipes the top. When you're grinding, especially if you're grinding without one of these funnels, okay, you're going to have probably some coffee grounds there. If you lock in your porter filter with coffee grounds there, you basically jam them in hard into the gasket. And coffee grounds are not very watertight. So that means you have to push really hard to get a good seal with that. Now, this is a real issue. You'll notice this is black. This is a really bad color choice because it means that fairly dark coffee grounds will be invisible on it. This is actually why we picked a really light color 
for our own. This is a this is the the <clears throat> our bespoke one. This is a design we made, so that the coffee grounds, if there are any on it, really scream at you. And there's two ways to kind of repair this if you've got coffee grounds on it. One, which is the easiest, is you take a rag, you wet it down, and you, you basically get the little edge here, and you get it in there. That's, that's the low-tech way, way. You can use a toothbrush as well. I've made a mess and get my water pick out, <laughs> and I just spray, and I just spray until there's no more stuff coming out. Yep. Um, the espresso machine I had before I had this had a non-removable gasket, so once the uh, gasket uh, died, or okay. clogged, the yes. machine was useless, so I went to great lengths to clean it. Uh, I don't recommend the water pick. What you can do, and Paul's the guy who led the whole thing on this, which is you can take the gasket out, clean it, and put it back in. That's so that you can get some little sort of pick device into there. When I was in the UK, I went to Boots and I bought a dental pick. And what I found is the dental pick kind of worked, but as soon as I started to grab, it was cheap and it would bend. And we went online to buy the tools that people buy for this. And what I found is that they were thicker metal. So they weren't necessarily really good metal, they just were thicker. And that meant they didn't bend, but it also made it really hard to get in on the sides. And what we found worked best was the expensive tools that dentists use, which are both thin and strong. Yeah. Uh, at that point, I think we were months on this. <laughs> we, we went looking, uh, you can see this, he's got actually protective ends uh, come with this because- They're it, sharp. They, they are they're sharp. <laughs> yeah, they're they very are. sharp. And uh, Paul, you ended up liking two different ends. Yeah. So that's why we have two ends there. So talk about Yep. Those so, ends and, and I guess you guys are wondering why we have got two different types of end, but doing the same, you know, job. Um, from extensive testing, what we kind of found and also letting other people trial out this tool was that it is a little bit uh, technique dependent. Um, but with any shape of the tool, we found that they did find some degree of success, um, but we did notice quite significantly that some tools were more efficient than others. Mm. Um, but while we have two different types of tools, it's really dependent on your preference, on which way round you want having the espresso machine. Um, some users have the preference of making it easier for themselves when they're cleaning the group head and will actually flip over the DE1, um, obviously protecting the cover with a towel and things like that, um, just to get more of a better access when they're literally going into the group head and, and, and cleaning it and removing items. Now, just to be clear on that, in order to get to the group head here, you basically yeah. have to get down and you have to get in there like this and there, and it's, it's pretty finicky. It's not easy. If you can bear to take your espresso machine out, flip it upside down, this becomes so much easier, not least of which you usually have ceiling lights so you mm -hmm. can actually see, but also you can bear down rather than bearing up. Um, I think I filled with this for a half hour with my, my boots dental pick. Oh, really? before I flipped it over and then I had it done in three minutes. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> so if you're cursing your, your gasket as you try and do it this way, flip your machine upside down yeah. and, and your life will be much easier. That's right. So this is just the regular hook, not the sort of uh, hard angled hook. And um, so you'll see me now. So I will locate, try to locate one of those three holes underneath. And if I can just see, I've got one, one on this corner, one over here and then there should be another one towards the, the hose here. So I'm gonna go with the closest one to me um, and I will just slip it in. And because this is an angle now, I'm using the mirror to sort of see where I am looking at. So um, perhaps in a moment we can get a B-roll with the mirror. Mm. Um, but if you see, I can just put it in. So now it's slipped in between the brass head group head parts and the gasket. And now I am twisting. And now, so sometimes it might slip, but that's okay. It just hasn't had the bite yet. So now it is, uh, I've got a grip, and now I'm just gently pulling. And I can just gently see it. And similar to how you would open a tin of biscuits, you wouldn't sort of keep going at the same leverage point. You would change the angle and perhaps go to uh, either here and then do the same technique again. So we can kind of see, we can just pull it down. And once we've got to here, we just go to the third point and we can do it again. And 
if your gasket is on the older side, it will be a little bit more frail. Mm. Um, and, you know, if you're pulling too hard, um, just be careful, it's quite warm. Um, if you're pulling too hard, the danger is that, you know, you might just take a chunk off it um, or, you know, you'll just lose that grip completely. Now, I, I would say that doesn't matter so much if you're planning on replacing the gasket. But if you are looking just to clean the gasket and maybe the housing underneath, uh, I would say just take that extra 10 seconds to make sure you've got a grip before you apply the force. Okay. So, Paul, how long should a gasket last? Um, I think a, a gasket should last anywhere between, you know, two to three months if you're not really looking after it. But it can last all the way up to a year if you're really looking after it. Um, what do I mean by looking after it is uh, if you're, you know, essentially not locking in your portafilter filter at night uh, or when you're not using it, just keeping it in there. Um, that just adds extra heat in there uh, and, it, and it can degrade the gasket okay. over time. You mean locking? You mean locking it tightly or not locking it at all? Um, just storing the gasket, uh, the, bas the portafilter filter in there. Um, just, you know, it, it encompasses all that heat, extra heat in there that just, okay. you know, makes the, the gasket. So take the portafilter filter out, you think makes the gasket last longer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you, it's your experience that a machine that's on all the time tires the gasket out faster or slower? Uh, definitely ties it out a lot faster. Um, again, it's that heat, you know, just degrading all the materials and making it sort of more crusty and, and, and less flexible. So, uh, yeah, less heat is better. Okay. I, that's certainly been my experience that my decent, I basically heat it two, three times a day to make an espresso uh, on about 15 minutes. And I find my gaskets don't ever need to be changed. I think I've changed about two gaskets in the seven years <clears throat> that I've had these machines. So I've never really thought of this as a really important topic, but I have seen machines go to customers and need a gasket within weeks. And one of the things I noticed when I watched them on video is that they really tightened the hell out of it. And when they do that, those gaskets become brittle and start leaking quickly. Yeah. That's a, uh, and you know, one of the things you'll see is you'll start seeing beading around the outside of the portafilter. filter. Um, if you see it in the middle, that's generally with your prep, but definitely if you start seeing water appearing around the outside, um, it's worth looking into your gasket to see if it needs cleaning or, or, or just generally replacing. Right, so I do a test. If I suspect the gasket's an issue, mm -hmm. what I do is I take the basket out, so take it out like that, and I get a blank basket. That's a basket without any holes, one of these. I put it in. When I lock it in, I will then do a flush. And if there's any leaking that happens during that, then I've got an issue because no water should come out. The machine will go to nine bar, this machine or any machine. And any dripping indicates you've got a gasket issue. So that test is the Surefire gasket test. So now that we've taken the gasket out, we've got another one, or maybe we've cleaned it, it's time to put the gasket back in. Now, let's say I'm clueless about this. Paul, <laughs> what do I need to do? Do I just jam it in there? Do I worry about the orientation? What's the deal? Well, there is a little bit of orientation needed, and um, it's really cool how we thought about it. We've made it, tried to make it easier for you, and there is essentially a little up on the, on the top of the gasket, and the top being this will face towards the group head. And we also have three notches here as well. And these notches generally will be at the uh, four o'clock, at the eight o'clock, and at the 12 o'clock. So when you put it in, the upward will be towards the water spout, hot water spout behind. Um, and we just simply slip it in, making sure that the camphor, which is the sort of slightly uh, curved inside edge, is facing inside and facing up. And we essentially just slip it into place and gently with your fingers, put it in and then use the blind water filter and, uh, and, and basket to essentially re-lock it and seal it back in. And you will find that with the portafilter, filter, it will gently push it back in and you don't need to sort of fiddle around with your fingers or anything like that. So, okay, so I've seen other people's um, gaskets not have the word up. So how do you know what you should do? I um, think that's, uh, you just generally have to look at the gasket itself. But normally the gasket will have a little camphor on the inside um, and that's it. So um, if you do find it, you are installing it and it has um, too much of resistance, um, generally you put it in the wrong way. It should just slip in quite nicely and easily. Um, so if you are having a little bit of trouble, just, uh, just double check you've got it the right way around. Okay, a uh, dirty little secret on these, which is while there is an up position, if you have a bad Gasket and you cannot make espresso, you've ordered it, you've got to wait a week for them to come. There's a trick. You can flip the gasket upside down, 
and it will work for a while. It's not great, but it'll let you make espresso while you wait for the good new gasket to arrive. And one other thing is, while Paul said there are three marks like that, like a triangle, we install the portafil, sorry, we, inst we install them so that one of those notches is here. And we do that so that you know where to look. But most companies don't do that. They just put the gasket in and you actually have to look yeah. for that. So don't think that that's some sort of global standard that people always have symmetry with those notches. That's just how we do things because we had to choose. So why not choose it in a way that is a little easier for you? So Paul, you mentioned using a blind basket to reseat that gasket. So why? Why not just use a normal basket? That's a really good question. And it's, it's just to save an extra motion. Um, so as soon as you ensure that the, the gasket is in place, you can just do the standard pressure test. Just press the flush button and uh, basically, hopefully it won't pop out, <laughs> but uh, we're just viewing and see if this, we've got a good seal around the outside. So um, as we can see, it's built up to pressure and we've got pre oil dryness all the way around. So it's safe to say that the, the gasket has been seated properly and it's doing its job creating a seal. So there's one other thing that I like about this test, which is, I don't know if you saw, but Paul squeezed a little bit, but not that much. And you can basically teach yourself how little you need to squeeze. So I'm just gonna just like lock it in like that. Just barely. And let's see what happens. Okay, and if that starts to drip, then I can teach myself how much I need to do it. And whoa, one finger just barely tugging and the seal is perfect, right? That's what you need to do if you want to preserve the life of your gasket. Just put the minimum pressure so that you have no dripping. The gasket's doing its job. Besides using a towel to get in there, I think there's some companies that sell tools for getting that yeah. gasket and cleaning. Yeah. You've got one there, don't you? It's right, one right here. And it just looks like a, a massive toothbrush for a giant, you know. Uh, but no, it does make your life a lot easier. Um, and, you know, you can use a toothbrush, which is very effective. But this just makes it a lot easier. And in, you know, a few motions, you put it into the gasket housing and then you're just twizzling around. And um, if it is really dirty, you will notice that the inside of the uh, brushes will start to go brown. Um, I like to have a, a glass of water or warm water, just mm. rinse it off and, and go again. Um, but you know, you can use this with uh, coffee detergent as well. Just make sure you okay. wear gloves. Okay. And there are much fancier ones than this. Some where you actually hit flush and there's water rinsing all over the place. And all that stuff works great. So whatever you do to clean your gasket, we're happy to see you do it. Um, I will mention that there are some porta filters that have different kind of top edges. So for example, our T porta filter is not rounded because it's a um, cast steel. So they couldn't do this rounded metal and it's more prone to, to leak. That, that little sharp edge there doesn't get as good a seal. So with our T porta filter, you have to tighten it quite a bit more um, and also look out for, for any gunk. I've seen other baskets as well that don't have as nice a fit here and are more prone to leaking. Some of the ones that we've tested yes, were yeah. more prone to leaking. Yeah. I'm going to address some issues that are not decent espresso specifically. There's a company named Cafe Lot that specializes in silicone gaskets. They're, I believe, red and blue. blue. Yeah. They're quite good. I would say technically not real different from ours other than being a different color. Um, and ours are using the E61 standard. I believe they're 8.5 millimeters thick on the silicone. Our NBRs compress less. These are 7.5 millimeters, okay? And uh, so the decent gaskets work absolutely fine also on E61 machines. I will say that the Cafe Lat gaskets are significantly less expensive. We're not in the gasket business, but if you're buying something else from us, throw it in the shopping car and then there's no shipping to pay. So uh, I very much like their gaskets as well, but since we go through thousands of them, we make our own as well rather than using theirs. Also, I like the light gray color. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I would like to say some of the clues that we could see um, to sort of let you know roughly when the gasket is about to change or you're not sure whether the gasket is leaking. Mm. Um, and that would be the final resting place of the porta filter handle. So mm. you will find that um, a decent gasket will lock anywhere between, you know, seven o'clock on the GHC. So if we think of the GHC as a, a, a dial on the clock, if it is a seven o'clock or maybe half six, 
that's fine. Um, anything beyond that point and you are seeing the beading, that's pretty much a sure sign of saying you need to think about changing your gas or giving it a clean to see if you need to get a new one. So that's a really good point, which is uh, porter filter fit, meaning the lock point, is defined by two things. The thickness and shape of these, what are called wings, that's uh, these edges here, those are called porter filter wings, and the gasket. So if we take someone else's portafilter basket and we put it on the decent, it might still fit and lock, but if this is just barely thicker, it's going to grab much, much sooner. And if it's a bit thinner, it's going to lock much further. And we've tested portafilters that lock here, which was not great. A really easy way to fix that, or, or basically compensate for that, is to get a thicker or a thinner gasket. So if you find that your portafilter is locking too far, it's taking too much spinning, then you want to get a gasket that's half a millimeter or even a millimeter thicker. And the opposite is true, which is if it's locking way out here, even at risk of falling out, then you want to get a gasket that's thinner. And once again, uh, shout out the Cafe Lot that has the whole gamut of different thicknesses. We don't, we just make them for our Pildefortes, our machine. There is another issue too, which is old machines. Sometimes the there are parts here inside the group head. It's called the bayonet. That's what grabs this part here. That will wear down with time. Basically, grinding back and forth over decades will slowly remove metal, so that your portafilter will over the decades lock further and further along on your machine. And in that case, one way to deal with that is to get a thicker gasket. That's the really cheap, simple way to yeah. deal with that. Yeah. Uh, but I'd say the most common reason people get different thicknesses gaskets is they want to buy someone else's uh, porta filter. They just like the way it looks and the fit is not perfect on their machine. So they fiddle with the gasket sizes. Thank you for listening to this fascinating episode all about gaskets and hope you tune in for the next deep dive on espresso parts and technology. Thanks, Paul. Thank you very much, John.